Hi there, I'm Dave and welcome to my workshop. And in this episode, I'm going to look at the neck of the Great Guitar Build-Off 2022 guitar. And um, I think slot the uh, fretboard. So, let's get on. Whew. Not sure how we're going to do this. paper to deal with but right there we are a laminated neck that needs to be uh, trimmed down a bit now then according to my notes I need the neck to be 17 mil thick but what I'm going to do I'm going to first of all tidy up the ends then I'm going to trim it down to 20 mil and then run it through the thicknesser so let's get the uh, the ends trimmed off first So set this up to 20 mil. That should be good. This year I've made myself a couple of biscuit tin lights, so hopefully the uh, images should be a little bit clearer. <laughs> Certainly brighter. Okay, all plugged in. Okay, well I've thickness this down to 18 mil, which is fine. Um, as I said, usually I go for about 17 mil, but I think 18 mil is gonna be fine, because obviously you've got to shape the back of that. Also got this little thin bit, I don't know what I can use that for. Might make an unusual fretboard, I suppose. Anyway, okay, talking about fretboards, let's get the fret slot cutting jig out. I've, um, about run out of wall space to hang this these jigs on there we go Clamp that down Okay. I'm going to have the nut at this end here and then that gives me a nice lot of grain before we get to the end of the fretboard about there. So I think that looks really nice. Now then I'm doing my usual trick of jumping in too quick. I was about to cut the slots on this fretboard but I need some binding to go on the edge and um, I think it might be an idea if I trim this fretboard to the final size first and then I can use the bits that I cut off on the edges there as the binding which hopefully will match the fretboard 
yeah I think I'll do that so a bit more measuring now I've drawn in a centre line so at the nut um, I need a, a width of about 44 I need to end up with 44 so I'm going to mark it at uh, 46 so that's uh, 23 and 23 okay and at fret 22 I believe we need to be 56 mil so fret 22 is just there mark across there that needs to be 56 so we're looking at 28 each side okay join up the dots And check my measurements. Now I really don't need to take very much off this just to bring it down to the line so I think I'm going to use a leveling beam with some 60 grit. Let's get myself a mask. Right, I've got the fretboard cut to size and I've just had a cup of tea so now I think it's time to stick this fretboard down onto my jig and uh, cut some fret slots so uh, let's get some tape This is a variation on the uh, masking tape and super glue theme. Uh, it's double sided tape and masking tape. So uh, the double sided tape is a real pain to get off, but um, it's quite convenient. Um, so stick it on some masking tape. There we go. Okay, so if you've not seen my jig before, the operation of it is quite simple. I've got a um, metal plate there with some uh, holes in it, and I've got a little nail in there, which just registers in those, and that doesn't look square, does it? Look at that, it's bent. Right, okay, but the idea is it registered in, the, in those uh, holes, and uh, then I can cut the frets. But that should be sticking out level. Right, there we go, fixed that. So, right, so the nut goes there. Now the, the fret slot cutting saw, which is this thing. And it's got a, a plastic um, depth stop on it and I've set it to 3 mil. So that's what I'm going to use and that just goes in this slot here 
and uh, sure enough the nut is where I said the nut is so that's promising okay so I slide it along so it clips down and um, saw the slot <laughs> It does help to um, clamp this down like I had before. There we go. Also helps to put a bit of wax on the blade. There we have it, there's the first slot done. So all I've got to do now is another what, 22 or 21. Okay, well that's the uh, the fretboard slotted. Let's just, just get it off now. There we go. Come on, out you come. There we go. Smash in. Okay, so I think I'm going to have a go at bending some wood now. This is my bending iron made out of. Uh, piece of uh, galvanized pipe um, with a 60 watt bulb inside to warm it up now you've got to be careful with galvanized metal you can't get it too hot this will go up to about 80 degrees centigrade so it's um, it's not going to in the dangerous area I don't believe um, but it's just enough to bend the wood um, I've got this little temperature gauge down the side there it's set to 120 but it never gets anywhere near 120 this is going to take a little while to warm up so I'm going to leave it and come back to this in a bit okay well the bending iron's gone up to 83 degrees so I think I'm going to give it a go now <clears throat> see if I can remember how to do this okay I think we'll try this this bottom edge first. Right. Okay, I hope this wood is thin enough, but we'll soon find out. Okay, spray it with water. Now unfortunately I've got a little bit of a split in this one here so I think I'm going to have to use another piece of wood and use this for another part of the, the body. So let's try again with another piece.
Well, I've got the first piece looking pretty good, so I'm going to see if I can get it into this mould now. Always interesting. to really squeeze that up. Well, that's the first piece bent and in place. I think I'm going to have a go at this little piece here next because uh, I don't think I can put the other side on until I've got this one out. Yeah, I've got another split there. Gotta be so careful trying to bend this wood. Okay, I've got to take more time. Take it slow, Dave. Take it slow. I'll put this piece in. So now I'm going to have to leave it all uh, overnight just to let it all settle and then I'll come back and tackle the other side. Okay it's been a couple of days since I bent the wood for the bottom half of the guitar and so I'm going to take that out of the frame and um, I've just got the iron heating up again I'm going to have a go at bending the wood for the top. Okay, now I just want to say the music in this uh, video is based on the Phrygian scale that I introduced in episode one of the GGBO 22 um, and um, hopefully there should be a link up there to that video. Now if you want to have a go at jamming along to the backing track that I put out with that, please do. It's on my website, footstepsguitars.co.uk. If you go onto the playing tab, you will find all the scales that I'm featuring and there's a, a backing track for each one. And um, well, if you want to change from, you know, jamming to pentatonic sort of uh, vamps, then um, have a go at this uh, Phrygian. Yeah, different. Anyway, let's get on with this. That went flying. May need to do this one again because I think it may need to bend a little bit more. It's not it's not really taking on the shape that one. But this one on the other hand, if I can get it out. And there's a big if. Okay. What can we do? We're going to have to bang this one out, I think. Here we go. Do the job. Woo, that looks pretty good. Okay, so. Well, there's two bits done that might need to be done again. But put this over there, see if the iron's heated up. The iron's on 64 degrees, so it's still not quite there yet. Now then, you may remember this guitar, the Autumn guitar, and um, the beautiful artwork that Carolyn, my wife, did. And, well, on last year's great guitar build off she did the kingfisher design now then so we've got an autumn guitar and so for the ggbo 2022 uh, it's being made of cherry so our immediate thought was cherry blossom but then we thought hold on a second we've already done an autumn season why don't we do spring 
So I can't give you any idea about the design yet because I don't know myself. But what I do know is that we're going to choose a spring theme for this GBO 2022 guitar and it should look really nice. Now, don't forget, don't forget, I've got a My Guitar feature and um, a feature um, Amateur Builders Guitars on the uh, channel. Now, if you've entered the Great Guitar Build Off and uh, you'd like me to feature some photos from your build and tell us about your guitar, then please contact me. If you contact me through the, the contact form on my website, footstepsguitars.co.uk, I'll get back to you and we can get some details and photographs of your build and um, we can get a link to your channel. Okay, we're at 71 degrees, so I'm gonna give it a go. Let's find a nice piece to have a go with. I think I'm gonna try that one. Get the template ready. Okay, let's get a bend in. Now, I found the trick is, you know, you've got to be patient with this. It's just a question of really slowly applying the pressure, getting the wood hot, and then all of a sudden it just starts to bend. Just, it's just starting to go. So this is what I'm aiming for. I've got to do that quite tight curve there at the end. Um, so a little bit more to go now. I find these really tight bits at the end of the wood probably the most difficult to do. Certainly to avoid splitting it. The other thing is trying to make sure you're, you're bending the wood square, you're not introducing a sort of a twist in it. Okay, see how far we've got. Still got some way to go. The other problem you can get if you don't bend it evenly is you get sort of a a series of bends and then sh and sort of straight bits and <laughs> you didn't really want to avoid that so uh, trying I'm trying to, uh, to sort of iron those out it is this end bit that's really difficult See how near we are now. Still got some way to go. That's probably the time to go off and make a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. This is, is it, this is feeling like it's giving more now. Definitely uh, feels like it's giving more. That's looking promising. So I think we'll start now to uh, go around the rest of the, uh, the top there.
Okay, so now I need to start bending it the other way from about that point there. I've just made a little mark with a pencil just there because now I need to take it back the other way. running at 73 degrees at the moment and it's amazing that it is bending and this this wood is three and a half mil thick so this gives you an idea of what you can do with um, something that's not that hot it would probably bend quicker if it was hotter of course but you know, you've got the risk of that you might burn the wood. Well, there's no risk of it here. bend round much more. Because of the way I've bent it, um, am I going to have to trim some off? I think I am. I'm just going to because yeah, I think I am. Just a little bit. If I trim it there. Okay, I just need to take that little piece off at the end there. I've got to cut that square across. Let's try it. Okay. Now, you'll, you'll notice it's, it's still not quite right. I need to, I need to do a little bit more bending. That needs to bend round a little bit more, and I need to release that a little bit. So, not quite there yet, but we're getting there. 
and I found from my experience last year that if I don't get it right now um, then well I end up having to redo it anyway so I might as well spend a bit of time just to get this right That's looking better. I think that's probably good enough. So let's get it clamped down. Okay, that looks okay. Now then, I've got to bend this piece here, which is a really fiddly bit to do, but it's worthwhile having a go at doing it. So, back to the bending iron. Well, this piece has effectively got a double back on itself. Uh, and so, it's a really fiddly bend. Something split then. No, I think we're okay. Oh look, oh, I've got this bend like that and I think that's going to do the job. What I'm going to have to do is just cut it down a little bit, from about there. Okay, I've cut that down to size, now I need to get this in place if I can. I don't mind telling you that took a bit of bashing to get that all in place but um, it's all in there now so I'm going to leave that to harden up and uh, we'll see what we get in a couple of days time. That's nice and level now.
Okay, I've put a centre line through the middle there, and um, I've marked a line here. Um, there's uh, there was a bit of snipe on when I uh, thickness this um, Avancol. In actual fact, I had quite a bit of trouble uh, thicknessing the Avancol because it, it uh, chips out. So in the end, I used the uh, the sander. But um, yeah, there was a bit of a, a snipe there. So what I've done, I've drawn a line there. I don't want to go further than that line. Um, fret 23 needs to line up with that. And that leaves me plenty at this end um, for the, uh, the scarf joint. So... Uh, Let's hold that in position. Now this is going to be interesting because I need to, I think I need to clamp that end and then look underneath because I should have center lines all the way through on both sides. So let's get that in position there. That lined up with the center line there. See if this will just hold it in position. Move the back of the camera. That's it. And turn it over. And I've lined up the centre line there. That there. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm careful, I should be able to mark the sides now. While I'm at it, I'll mark the position of the nut. Not sure that I'll need to know that, but I may do. Certainly when I'm uh, doing the scarf joint, I will need to know that. Okay, Take that off there, Take that off there. Join those two dots up there. Okay, uh, so now I can cut this out. And what I'm going to do is going to cut it out wider than the line because I always cut it too narrow. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there. See if I can get the uh, teeth marks out. and uh, level do the other side Okay, that's okay. Now I've done a bit of marking up for the headstock uh, joint. Uh, this this first line here is the nut, and I've I've drawn another line five mil back. What I'm going to do is a ten mil slope from that point, so the headstock will go back 
uh, 10 degrees so from that point there and I'll just do the same on the other side just mark it so that's the slope back um, I've also marked on the headstock where the nut is so that will go there I need to slope it back. In fact, what I'll do, I think, uh, yeah, I just need to need to slope that back from that point onwards. Okay, I've got my little jig stuck onto this piece of wood. This is for cutting a 10 degree angle. I'm going to cut it this side of the line and then plane it down. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Now that approach works to a certain extent, but because this neck tapers down now, that's obviously not cut um, straight across. So this is where I need to plane it. So let's get the plane and um, well, work it down to the line. Okay, so that's that's ready to uh, receive that headstock. Now, before I do that, obviously this is going to end, and I don't want it just to be a straight line. Um, and I'm just thinking um, some sort of curve. But again, I don't want it just completely rounded. Um, so it just occurred to me, why not create? bit of a shape on the end there um, perhaps something now then let's see something a bit offset something a bit like that on the back there just have to try and you Use your imagination to see uh, is that gonna work? Is that gonna work? I wonder. I mean actually it's gonna be it's gonna be like that, isn't it? So that's the and so to be honest with you, I need to Need to bring that back, don't I? Will that be enough to hold it though? I mean, I'm going to sand it back anyway. I'm going to need to come back to about there. So then I can shape it to sort of create a volute around that point there. Whew. Just bring that back a bit. That's where the nut should be there. Straight across there. Yeah, so if it, if it started about here, out there, and then went round. Oh, okay, let's try that. Bring it over this way a little bit more.
And when I carve that, can I carve that into some sort of volute? I've got to have a substantial piece there, otherwise it's not going to hold it, is it? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to go with that. Right, there's no easy way with this. It's going to be a bit of a messy glue up because I've got to try and get it all lined up and I've really got to get it clamped tight because this joint has got a hold. Right. Okay. Actually, let me get a pencil. might be able to make my life a little bit easier if I, uh, I mark with a pencil where it should fit on the other side. No, that's moved. <laughs> this is really going to be a fiddle. Okay. I'm just going to go for it. think that's done it. Well do you know what I, I know I'm taking a bit of a risk with a, a neck joint like that but I mean wow, life's about taking risks isn't it. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that that's going to be strong enough to hold the strings. <laughs> we'll soon find out won't we well I say we'll soon find out we'll find out when we string it up okay well I think I'm going to call it a day for this episode I've managed to get quite a bit done and um, now it's just a question of letting this stuff dry and then um, well then we can get back onto the fretboard so thank you very much for watching and uh, stay safe and I'll see you soon